Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks, and I want to draw your attention to this school letter that was sent to me. It's doing the rounds this morning on the internet. Uh, it is in regards to the school doing lockdown drills. So this is from a school in Nottingham, sent out 28th of April, and I'm curious, is this happening in other schools in the UK at the moment with the same wording? Here is the letter. Dear parent, carer, enhancing safety in our schools. It says, at Ellis Guildford School, we take safeguarding and safety very seriously. It is important that we continue to review all our procedures taking into account even those events that are very unlikely to occur. As part of this process, we have introduced a new procedure called lockdown. And it then says they will be doing this on May the 12th. It then says it's similar to a fire drill, but instead of outside, it's inside. It then gives reasons why they are doing this. And they say perhaps because a dangerous person is outside the school or an animal on the school site. An animal, okay. A dangerous situation in the local community, a nearby chemical incident or other air pollution etc. I mean, do you not think people have had enough fear projected in their lives over the last year? Obviously not. The school the school doesn't the school wants to continue it. It then goes on to talk about the procedure, which is as follows. It says students will be alerted to lockdown by the lockdown alert. This is a continual alert on the school tannoy system stating that a lockdown has initiated. If students are already in a lesson, then they remain in the room. If students are between lessons, they should move directly to their next lesson. Classroom doors will be locked from the inside and students are moved away from windows and doors. Uh, Mobile phones should be switched off. Students encouraged to keep silent and avoid using their phones. Parents will be informed by notification. Then it says, parents should not attempt to call or come to the school as this may hinder the school efforts to contact emergency services. It then says, parents should not discuss the event on social media as this may spread false information and create panic. Students will be instructed not to use mobile phones during a lockdown. So parents should not be alarmed if your child does not answer their phone. It's kind of strange. There's a lot of emphasis on stopping contacts between parents and their children in that list. You know, you've got kids in masks now all day long in school. Now they want them to be silent and lock them in a classroom and pretend there is some form of what? What did they say? A possible chemical attack outside or an attacker outside the school? What is all of this? This is conditioning. That's what it is. Keeping people, parents and children in a constant state of fear. Constantly telling them that something terrible might happen to them at some point in the future and they have to do something to keep themselves safe in case it ever happens in the future. Obviously, there needs to be fire drills and safety precautions, but this this seems very weird. And is this not another way of standardizing the idea of lockdowns? To me, the most revealing thing in this letter are the instructions. Parents must not discuss any incident on social media, etc. They must not do this. They must not do that. Kids must not use their phone. It's so focused on the separation of child and parent, is it not? The beginning of conditioning of children to get them used to receiving strict orders from authority, as opposed to from their parents. Like the school, which supersedes that of the parent. And if the parent complies with this over time, this will program the children to obey the authorities, above and beyond their own parents. Is is that not what it's all about? Maybe. I mean, come on. What is this? Your child will be locked in school. Don't attempt to contact them and we'll let you know when you can have them back. Look, like I said before, in my opinion, when the schools started asking for tests 
and making kids wear masks all day long? That was a line that you shouldn't have crossed. If it was my kid, I would take them out of school like that. Simple. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to the tribe at hugotalks.com, trying to build a community of like-minded souls who think for themselves a support network for these increasingly unstable times. See you later. The Lagba Omer Festival celebrates the life of a second century rabbi, and it is one of the holiest festivals in the Jewish calendar. Last year's events were curtailed because of COVID. This year, 10,000 pilgrims were allowed to attend, but more than 100,000 turned up. It was the largest legal public gathering in Israel since the pandemic, and it ended in tragedy. We don't know exactly what caused the stampede, but thousands were crushed into narrow passageways, and it quickly became chaotic. Some of the men tried to pull down corrugated walls to escape. They'd been put up to keep people apart because of COVID. Children, some of them only two or three years old, became separated from their parents. Some were trampled on and died despite paramedics attempts to resuscitate them. We were standing and, and waiting for our friends. Uh, we were gonna go inside for the dancing and stuff. And uh, all of a sudden we saw paramedics from Mada and whatever running by uh, like mid CPR on, a, on kids. Uh, and then one after the other started coming out, ambulances. Uh, and then we understood like something's going on here. Mobile phone reception went down as people frantically tried to find loved ones. And the Israeli military sent helicopters to evacuate the worst injured. A call for blood donations has gone out across Israel today. When we reached the place, we realised it is a totally different incident. We are in a mass casualty incident. I see here tens of people lying on the floor. I see here tens of injured walking and bleeding. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu resisted calls to put COVID restrictions on this year's festival. He visited the site in person on Friday morning. This is the worst civilian disaster in modern Israeli history. Condolences have been sent from world governments. There are some Jewish pilgrims who want to continue the festival today, but so far, the police are preventing them from doing so. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News. The heliacal rising of a star occurs annually when it first becomes visible above the eastern horizon for a brief moment just before sunrise, after a period of time when it had not been visible. Relative to the stars, the sun appears to drift eastward about one degree per day along a path called the ecliptic. While the sun is moving past a given star, the star cannot be seen because it is only above the horizon during the day. The heliacal rising occurs when the sun has moved far enough past the star that the star rises and becomes visible before the sun rises in the morning. Each day after the heliacal rising, the star will rise slightly earlier and remain visible for longer before the light from the rising sun overwhelms it. Over the following days the star will move further and further westward, about one degree per day relative to the sun until eventually it is no longer visible in the sky at sunrise, because it has already set below the western horizon. This is called the cosmical setting. The same star will reappear in the eastern sky at dawn approximately one year after its previous heliacal rising. Because the heliacal rising depends on the observation of the object, its exact timing can be dependent on weather conditions. Some stars, when viewed from a particular latitude on Earth, do not rise or set. These are circumpolar stars, which are either always in the sky, or never. For example, the North Star is not visible in Australia and the Southern Cross is not seen in Europe, 
because they always stay below the respective horizons. Changing out there. There's a storm coming, Harry. Just like last time. The Ministry of Magic is pleased to announce the appointment of Dolores Jane Umbridge as High Inquisitor to address the falling standards at Hogwarts School. Things at Hogwarts? are far worse than I feared. Enough! You have been told that a certain dark wizard is at large. This is a lie. It's not a lie. I saw it. We've got to be able to defend ourselves. And if Umbridge refuses to teach us how, we need someone who will. Every great wizard in history has started out as nothing more than what we are now. If they can do it, why not us? It's sort of exciting, isn't it? It's stupefying! Breaking the rules. Who are you and what have you done with Hermione Granger? You're a really good teacher, Harry. <laughs> the Minister's gonna have a full uprising on their hands. It's your turn now. Discipline your line. We're in this together. If Voldemort's building up an army, then I want to fight. Look at me! Everything. 